Lower Kanasensa. Oh, we're under attack immediately. All right. So this is still ongoing. There's a was it Dactite Cad? No other signs along here. Two guys there. Straightforward enough. No big hordes this time around. I say we all swarm this person. You can't catch us in time. We destroy your friend. Actually, it's surprisingly hard to uh, obliterate them. <laughs> Let's get out of that AOE real quick. And right back to attacking, if I can click on this person. Which is surprisingly hard, honestly. Wow. I legitimately can't select the bad... There we go. The bad guy to get them going. Let's see. We could put down a blazing bulwark in the general direction of the enemies in case they send projectiles our way. There we go. That blocks the projectiles from coming in and gives us the opportunity to obliterate that person. Now we'll see how well we can take this guy out before he does his next AoE. I don't take our chances of being that high, honestly. Get that bubble going. Oh. Let's get out of that. It's kind of convenient. If you get out of the attack... Whoa, did the... Do her... Oh no, she just cast Blazing Bulwark on her own, never mind. <laughs> For a second there, I thought the, bla that the Blazing Bulwark followed me, and it was always going to be on her, but facing a direction instead of being a static location thing. That, that was throw throwing me for a trip. Alright. Oh, you decided to rejoin us, huh? Yeah, it's funny that when they, uh, when they did the AoE attack like that, I run away, and it kind of just becomes a free chance to wail on their, en on their ally while they're, while they're paralyzed from being able to respond. Alright, you're down. Guess what happens now? I'm behind you. Okay, I'm less behind you now, admittedly. There we go. Ah, but he keeps running. Don't be annoying, dude. The fight's over. Just give up and enjoy death. I guess it's not what normally humans do. <laughs> what do you mean, self-preservation instinct? I don't understand this concept. That's lore. Let's go grab that. The Umber Calendar. The Umber Calendar is a strange one. By any standards, time and history are divided into canticles, each lasting various amounts of misuras, each of which is in turn lasts. Uh, each of which in turn lasts four years. The reason for this is to be found in the history of the nation. The first settlers of Ombre were uh, from the neighboring theocratic nation of Altimir and had been cast out for blasphemy. Spurned and spiteful, they vowed to stray from the ways of the culture of their fatherlands as much as they could. When Altamirians listened to their he their heads and their gods, um uh, Umbrians listened to their hearts and their whims. The first step that Ombre took away from the Altamir was the uh, adoption of its own calendar. Instead of the Orin calendar that the Altamir followed, uh, which, which had years that consisted of three months, each lasting approximately 120 days. The Umber Calendar, also known as the Song of Ages, was made to comprise years of eight months and approximately 45 days in each. The months are as follows. Enesia, Selira, Elodia, Cora, Revita, Pika, Sendera, Ofina. Though many refer to events by the canticle in which they occurred, there is a slightly more accurate method of recording dates, though often only used by the Vegilis. Years are recorded numerically from the establishment of the Ombre. Uh, Vegilis, used in the suffix I-L, Inisia Liberata, to denote the year of the event with respect to the founding of the nation. Yeah, at some point you need a standard date system to figure out the, so that you can actually communicate between nations or between alternate histories when trying to reconcile when things happen. If everyone's gonna go make up their own. Hello, this one's like hidden. The First. The founder of Umbra was a man referred to as the First, whose actual name was Theronin Ateo. Theronin Ateo? Yeah. Born in the land of Altamir, Theronin was considered cursed by his curiosity. He'd always questioned the prophets, wondered what lay beyond the mountain of Mirare, or Mirare, in the lands they'd known as the Dark Beyond. There was tales, of course, of the presence of unspeakable evils, of death, 
of tainted lands. Though Theronin remained skeptical, he was a man who needed to see with his own eyes to believe, and so, disobeying strict orders from the priests of his theocratic country, he brought a group of adventurers together and ventured into the dark beyond. His journey to the Echoing Plains set him upon Sierra Vede, and he met the Fey there. Curious, or cautious, he never interacted very deeply with them, but he recognized their existence and wished to learn more about them. He returned to Altamire and attempted to requ uh, requisition larger forces to explore the wilderness that lay beyond, but when he told the priests the stories of his expeditions, they called him blasphemous. According to their religious texts, the people of Altamire were uh, promised salvation if they kept their holy lands free of the demons that lurked in the world beyond. There are stories about the creatures that he found sparked a wave of terror that coursed through the priestly councils. Their reaction was to exile him and, ta and the taint which he brought back. And so, uh, Theronin, as well as those others who had either supported him or who, too, had grown tired of the rigid Altamirian theocracy, left Altamire and journeyed through the Echoing Plains until they reached Sierra Verde. Under the mountain shadow, they settled and began what was to grow into the prosperous nation known as Ombre today. Wow. So just for going outside of their walls and discovering the outside world, which did feature creatures that seemed similar to uh, elements of their religion that they thought what might be evil, they exiled his entire group of people from their kingdom. That seems a tad severe. But I guess they probably thought that it was genuinely going to corrupt and just and bring the downfall of everything they had. Remember, if you lie to me again, another one of your dogs will die. You've cost one of them his life already. You don't want another on your hands, do you? No. Good. Now, let me repeat the call numbers again. And this time, I don't expect you to say that they don't exist, all right? Y yes The first... DF328D439KL3. The second. DT8548172PG6. The third. DP903. What is going on, Cicero? They're looking for specific books. Resitoff must have had something to do with this. Well, best to act while we have the element of surprise. Wait, Tiziana! Get them! Brace yourselves. Take that, surprise. Alright, well hopefully the uh, unarmed civilians nearby don't all get killed in the, over the course of this. There's a cad, a bruiser, a thumper, and a thump two thumpers. Uh, we could focus fire on them because of their dangerous magic that comes in, and their proximity is not a terrible idea. But we are a little- we're all gonna get a little swarmed here. You know what? Those guys have ranged attacks. Let's all go after this guy. And throw down a bulwark in this direction. There we go. Try to get out of the AoE a little bit. There we go. So now there's something at least blocking some of the projectiles that are coming in. Maybe we can try to take this guy out while his ally is preoccupied, I hope. And here comes the incoming attacks again. They don't, that uh, shield does not last forever. Oh, I haven't spent her. Have I spent her points yet? Let's, oh, I, I think I accidentally just canceled her attacking too. Four points remaining. I need to <laughs> spend those between fights. God damn it! Whoa! What the actual hell is this? <laughs> I'm sure glad the game tells you what path the idiot game's gonna take sometimes, because look at this. If I right click on this guy to attack him, it's gonna go all the way around here? Why? You wanna try again? Maybe I click on this guy and click back? Okay, never mind. I'll just manually path them then. Oh, that fight's over. Oh! Well, we don't wanna get- we don't wanna hang out in this. I wish you could set multiple waypoints, like an XCOM. I can't set a path that says leave circle immediately, but then run over to this guy. That's too bad. Hello, friend. 
That guy's just hanging out doing his circle stuff. It's fine. At least we can try to keep things a little distracted while we just worry we just worry about wailing on this guy for a bit. Uh, who are you going after? Are you just hanging out here? Whoops. Uh, you know what? He could use some, some backup over here. There we go. Let's have you actually turn around since this character's getting vulnerable in all of this. We can take out the big knight. Oh, no, we can't. Damn you, AoE. <laughs> Just seems like a generally bad idea to, to stand in that for too long. But I can do my healing bubble, so that's good. And chaser attack. Funnily enough, we're, we're doing more damage to his, fo his uh, health and his focus this time. Which is slightly counterintuitive. Get out of that AoE. No, don't run back into it. Oh, now that guy's down. Alright, well, everyone go after this guy, then. <laughs> we'll wail on the obvious extra guy here. Let's see. I don't think we need to use my mask ability right now to slow people down. It's late enough into the fight that I don't think it's that big of a deal. Everyone hit him with what you got. There we go. And there's the AoE again. There we go. So now we do hold on all three of them. No reason to hang out in that in that, in that mess. We can just as easily fight them the moment it's over. Let's see here. Pop your bubbles. Oops. I told you. You chose well. Unbind the Vegilis. Calden, see if they need healing. Ages. Thank you, Cicero. Are you hurt? I'm fine. What are you doing here? Actually, we were here for answers, but it seems that all we found are questions instead. He was asking you about books? If only he just asked. Capturing all my Vegilis like this, a tad overdramatic, I'd say. Why did he want them? I don't know. I do remember their call numbers, though. We should get them ourselves, then. See if... <gasps> Are those... Hold your ground! Hello, Paper Fay. What's that? Biblio Fay. Bookling Fay. I assume that he might be some kind of uh, ranged attacker. Oh, they're swarming me a bit. Well, it'll give us a chance to, de to beat this one down a little faster. Let's see. Get our orbs out, since the cooldown's short enough that we want to activate it as frequently as possible. How you doing down here? Ah, oh, you're managing. You'll be fine. Especially with those AoE attacks I have. Apparently I can hit two of them at once. Uh, I just noticed that I was hurting... I was attacking one of them directly, but somehow hurting all of them. I didn't realize that he had that kind of reach with his attacks. There we go. As expected, the fire attacks seem rather effective. Uh, does not appear to have focus, so the, the side I'm attacking from doesn't seem to matter. In general, the in general the face seem weaker. Oh, he summoned new enemies. That's what he was doing. I knew the Fey problem was bad, but even here, it's related to why we came to find you. Actually, the Fey. This is not the first of its kind that I've encountered. I have a theory as to how and where they're spawning. I'm all ears. One thing at a time. I'll tell you what we've learned about the Fae after we get the books, if that's all right with you. As much as I'd like to know now, I suppose my curiosity can wait. I can bring you to the books they were looking for, but they took all our masquerines, tossed them to the lower levels. If there are more Fae out there... We'll handle them. The wounded have been healed. And they're all cut loose. Then let's go. We'll find the books and clear a way for the Vigilus as well. Oh my goodness. Alright, so first things first, let's look at our skills. I believe I was saving up for you. Oops, double clicked a little bit because it was lagging. Alright, so I was saving up for damage reduction, I believe. Is that Soriel's Ward? Yep. An aura that reduces incoming damage and absorbs some damage taken by nearby allies. 
go ahead and grab that real quick. So we have to be careful about how many we buy, because we can only equip three of them at once. Which is kind of a limitation. From that point on, it's more about what you want to put points into, as opposed to what else you want to learn. So you need to be a little careful here. Well, the more AoE would, would be nice. Let's see. So I've got the Dust Devil right now, and just my basic melee attack and nothing else. So you can make people slow and take damage over time. Successive attacks that, uh, as you charge forward, so it's a way of pursuing people, which is kind of nice. Uh, sharp flint pierces through enemy multiple enemies. I do like that, too. The idea there, it seems to be that they, uh, seems to be damage over time turrets, basically. I, I, th I do think I still want to get the Mud Drake. Tremor creates a powerful quake that deals damage to all enemies near the, uh, within range. I, I like a lot of the skills I have options for here, <laughs> so it's a, it'll be a little tough picking four, but I do really want the Mud Drake, I think, and I might save up for that right now. Let's see, the additional twister is going to cost two points. Stance change costs two points. So uh, my next choice is either to add a, something to my melee attack or to save up for the, 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 uh, the, the, what is it called? Drake, in this case. Uh... Because otherwise my one point upgrades are going to start running out pretty soon here. Do this last one's cost three? You can't tell from here. Alright, uh, whenever an earth elemental tag is activated, target will be forced to attack. Or, uh, Cicero gains focus and mask charge. Not a terrible idea. It means he'd be more efficient, basically, if he was stacking these kinds of things. I think I will save up for the Drake, though, for now. And buy that later. Alright, Tiziana. I need to buy some skills for you. So you start off with Blazing Bulwark, I don't get a choice on that. And you already have it equipped, so it's not a terrible idea to add a bonus here. Launches a set of shields outwards that deal damage to enemies versus increased duration. The duration's exceptionally short, so that seems like it'd be a, a, the duration could be a, a good bonus. It is a little rough dealing with the fact that these skills don't really have specifics that's attached to them. They don't really tell you a lot of detail about, like, it increases the duration from 5 seconds to 10 seconds, or like, what? It's just like, it'll last longer. How long does it last now? How long will it last after this point is applied? I don't know. It's a, it's a, there's a lack of information here. It feels like, I can't remember what RPG that comes to mind, but there's some RPG where I've played where, like, you can, you, oh, I think it's World of Warcraft, actually, maybe, where you could have, like, the simple tooltips, but they can turn on advanced tooltips, and it tells you, like, the actual numbers and details of each skill instead of just the vague description of them. And this game kind of needs that, I think. Uh, reduces all damage the attack caster takes and attacks to any more threat. Uh, yep. Might as well grab everybody's skills that make them take less damage, because that's clearly something I should be worried about. Attack speed and mask charger here, just like with our blue friend. But I should pick a new skill to buy. Alright, so you have the spinning fireballs, wave of fire. Launches a fan of flaming bolts into a single direction. That seems neat, actually. And release of wave of fire that deals damage to nearby enemies. Da burn damage over time. I do like the idea of judgment. A fan of flaming bolts sounds like a a, uh, a shotgun-like projectile cone. And I like the idea of that. So let's grab you. Then I go for bonus bolt range, or have them knock enemies back. Or I can go for other bonuses, of course. Uh, when a fire tag is activated, uh, target suffers burn damage over time. Whenever an elemental tag is activated, target becomes forced to attack Tiziana. It's probably a good idea to do burn damage over time, but it might be good to upgrade. A knockback could give us some good control. Uh, I think I'm gonna do the fire, t the fire damage over time upgrade for now. I like that one. Okay. Now she has skills applied, and will be functioning properly instead of not at all. Let's see. I, mu I have to assume that a cluster of one plus enemies means a cluster of more than one enemy, hopefully. Otherwise, how do I make sense of the fact that it, uh... Like, a cluster of one enemy, or more, would just be one enemy. <laughs> Alright. Tiziana. I suppose one benefit of having her trail along would be her prowess in battle. 
I shouldn't be surprised given the fact that she is a marshal of the most marshal of the Samora. And with a wow, marshal and marshal. They're getting cute with their word with their word choice here. Uh, with a with a discipline and straightforwardness, she car uh, she carries over her to personal life. She has effectively coerced me into telling her about details regarding the investigation, accomplishing the feat that Neri, uh, with Neri a drop of guile, I'm impressed with the e uh, efficacy of her methods. As much as I am victim to them, perhaps all this flittering about in the shadows isn't as necessary or efficient as our culture has led us to believe. And then there is the point about the bright chorus. She knows it by heart, clearly, and that is confusing to me. There are very few in the Luca who still believe in the Bright Chorus. Many believe that its tenets are outdated and impractical. Judging by her trust in the institution of the Luca, I'd have thought she'd become that she'd be one of them. But yet, here she is, quoting it. And so, the veil of questions surrounding this enigma thickens. And then Kyrie Aquila, the, the woman we just saved. If there is a search for a parable of how doggedness pays off, the story of Kairi Aquila would be a fine candidate. Born of two portieri, Kairi's life has not been paved with the intention of guiding her towards academia. In fact, her parents had intended for her to rise through the ranks of the portieri and hopefully be selected as an inspettori. Her father was a dirge and her mother was a sicaro. Her, both her training... Uh, both trained her in their respective media for the Vamos test and taught her the histories of Ombre for her accredita. Though it was all, uh, through it all, Kyrie performed in the media as her portieri parents had expected. Well, what they hadn't expected from her, their daughter, however, was her intense curiosity regarding the histories of the world. When her parents would give her a summary of the Therald, she would go on to ask about the entirety of Rune and its culture. When she... When they mentioned insulting, she would ask about the first canticle and how they'd seen and treated the phenomenon. When they warned her about the Fae, she, asked, she would ask about those found in the Echoing Plains and what they'd been like when the first arrived to establish Ombre. Constantly, however, her inquisitions would be quelled. Focus on practicing your media, her parents would say, and during her youth she'd obey. All this changed when, at the age of, th age of 18, she sat for her Vamos tests and failed them. When her parents found out, they were furious. It was impossible that she failed. She wa uh, they watched over her with scrutiny of hawks. How could she have done poorly? They learned later that she'd intentionally flunked the rest of the, media, uh, the tests of media proficiency. She didn't want to be a portieri. She wanted to be a vegetalist. She told the testers first, then her parents. Upon seeing the fire in her eyes as she spoke those words, her parents realized that there was something special about their daughter. They realized that they could no longer control her and they had to let her go. Suffice to say, considering the uh, considering her position in the registry, that was a move that benefited them all. That's neat. She's, she's so... She had such a d desire for knowledge that she pursued it at the expense of anything else, basically. Uh, willing to, d to defy the direction that people uh, that weren't her wanted her life to go in because she knew what she wanted from the get-go. The Vegilis, part of the registry. The Vegilists are the thinkers of the Registry, and it, its, its ranks comprise the brightest and most astute of Ombre's minds. Many beyond the White Spire fail to understand the importance of the Vegilists. To them, the men and women of the scrolls and the books are soft and foolish for choosing to do forsake power in exchange for knowledge. Certainly, their, uh, their opinion ignores the fact that knowledge often is, in itself, a form of power. The Vegilists live on the brink of discovery, and in a city that's been built upon the ruins of civilization that dominate lands the size of which Umbrians have never even dreamed, they are likely closer to anyone else in the city to understanding the wellspring of long-lost ancient pa uh, powers. So it's almost a little rough that I'm denying her knowledge because she's so devoted to the concept. The first two books are on this level. But it's uh, one less distraction while we'll try to accomplish this. Hey, bad guys. We've got this. Nice to see you. Oh, we get to see you. She's doing. She's using judgment. Let's look what it looks like. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, as expected, it is a bit shotgun-like. All the way down to the fact that it doesn't really have a projectile element to it. It looks like a, a, a cone of lines that kind of go out as they see put, as they see fit. Let's see. 
Aura reduces incoming damage and absorbs damage taken by nearby allies. So they have to be right on top of you, because that's a tiny looking aura. It'll work though. Hey now. So if I if I group up in here, they they should be a lot harder to hurt actually for a while. But I really have to be on top of them. Also there's also there's limits to how long the aura is bound to last. But sure. Damage all about. Oh, he is there he goes running off again. Just stick with the group. There we go. Wow, did you see the path that she was programmed to take for a second there? She was going to run in a, a circle around the entire place. It's a good thing that the AI is automatically constantly at, at, at attributing new commands. Or that could have been rough. And water gun. There we go. So we, we should take out the source if we can. Everybody should go on this guy, because otherwise it's not going to go down fast enough. That's becoming a problem, because it, it's clearly summoning everybody. There we go. Yeah, you gotta get on the main book or it's gonna persist and keep summoning new enemies, and that's not a gauntlet we can continue to weather forever. Is this it? It is. It's a compilation of folk tales that we believe the Dementicati had once told. That is incredibly thick. What would Raz want with folk tales? We'll have time to figure it out later. We should get the other two. And true to the game's, uh, true to true to the continuity of the game right now, uh, the there's no codex entry added for that book right now because he's not reading it, and all of the codex entries are written in first person from his perspective and his beliefs and his thoughts and everything. This wasn't here a second ago, was it? It's like they're hiding from me. The Canticles. The Umber Calendar is divided into canticles, each lasting an indeterminate number of years. It is the responsibility of the songstresses of the city to recognize the events that spell the end of the canticle. The ending of a war, or a great economic windfall, for example. And to then name the canticle and chronicle all the major events that have transpired since it, that, since it began. Needless to say, the process through which a canticle is declared, or is, uh, declared over is an incredibly subjective one. Though there are many who disagree with the haphazard and disorganized method of chronicling the ages, tradition can sometimes be stronger than sense, and the method has been preserved over Umbra's uh, since Umbra's beginning. Umbra is currently in its eighth canticle, and as of my writing, this is in its four hundred and seventh year since its liberation. It's like calling stuff things like the Dark Ages and the Renaissance, like it's. You look at periods of history and be like, uh, that's a different period of history. That, that, that was, the difference was important enough that I'm going to call that a different thing now. And it's a little, it's pretty arbitrary. But it happens. Just do everything we can to obliterate this thing before it gets to summon too many other things that I don't want it to have to summon right now. I'm just going to spam everything at it right now. <laughs> Just hit it with all the things we have. There we go. That took it out before I got to summon much more. Is there anyone else? Ah, oh, there's another bibliophay at the end. That's not good. So th they continually summon spiders, is my understanding. What are they called again? Bookling fay. Alright. I would like to put a shield down. But I can't right now. Oh, the book's... Oh. Baby Little Fae is coming my way. I kind of thought I'd have to run for it, but it looks like he's getting closer on his own. That's unexpected. Okay. Sure. If I put down these shields. We can hopefully defend ourselves from those projectiles that are coming our way while we try to focus on this guy. Am I... Oh, I'm controlling the wrong character. There we go. Just take it down. There we go. Alright, no more summoner. Hey guys. What are you worried about? Is it because you're out of allies? Oh. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. Whoops. 
Let's get on that real quick. Reviving seems to be an expected part of combat because it's surprisingly easy to do. It's almost like balancing the the deaths in your party is supposed to be just part of the me the mechanic here. Hello. Now you're wet paper. <laughs> all your pages are gonna stick together and crumple and get all moldy and stuff. You. So that's where I'm supposed to go, but I'm a little curious to see if there's something stashed around here, because... Th yeah, they've been hiding lore around corners now. I feel like I'm, de I'm destined to miss some of it eventually, if I haven't already. Just because, how do you even keep track of this stuff? Guardia Sempra. Uh, this is in the magic territory. All masquerada who believe in some sort of tutelage in the media often begin their training by learning how to establish defensive barrier, uh, pedagon... <laughs> How to establish a defensive barrier pedagogically. I've never seen that word before. That is terrifying. <laughs> Known as a guardia sempra. Colloquially, uh, however, th this defense mechanism is uh, referred to as a focus shield. For in order to maintain it, the masquerade must constantly devote a fraction of their trained mind to intercept incoming offensive maneuvers with a flash of their element. This brief manifestation of a barrier assists the Masquerade in reducing any sort of damage coming their way. Certainly, even the even the mind of a trained Masquerade can grow weary if it's subjected to relentless, relentless onslaught, and under such pressure, the Masquerade's Guardia, Sempra, can fail to defend the Masquerade against incoming assaults, leaving them vulnerable to attack. That almost sounds like an element of uh, focus, basically. 